transformations of the graph of y equals x squared. So transformations are a really big part of grade 11 math. So much so, in fact, that you will do so many transformations in grade 11. Almost every chapter, you'll learn about a new function and then you'll do transformations on it. So it's an important skill that you you grasp well in grade 10 because you are going to be using an awful lot in grade 11 especially. So we're going to talk about just the graph of y equals x squared in grade 10 and the first thing we're going to talk about is what is a vertical shift. So you know that vertical, a vertical axis means the up and down. So if you went skiing you'd say well what's the vertical drop on the hill? Um, so you know that means the movement up and down the y-axis. It's really hard to teach this lesson when I'm not standing in front of you waving my arms up and down. But I think I'll bring in my calculator to help you understand this. Now some of you, I hope you're familiar with a program called Desmos. I'll write it up here in the corner, Desmos. And it's a free application on the computer that allows you to um, graph functions. You put in your equations and it graphs it for you. I will also at the end of this lesson in the description give you a link to kind of a fun game where you have to guess the equation of the parabola given three points of it. So it's a really good exercise to make sure you've understood what we're going to be doing today. So a vertical shift means you take the function y equals x squared, your nice perfect little parabola, and you shift it up k units. So I'll bring in my calculator here. So here's x squared, and if I graph that, it would look like this, and that's just a nice little parabola. I'm hoping it's on the screen, yep. And now if I go in and put in another equation, let's say I put in um, x squared, and I'm going to add five to it. So you have to watch quickly here because it graphs very fast, it'll draw x squared and then it'll put in x squared plus 5. Whoa, it was so fast. So you can see the graph has exactly the same shape. Um, you may say, well no, it's not quite the same. It is exactly the same. It's just been transferred up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. So if I say x squared plus 5, you know the graph went up 5. And let's add to that a second one where we'll do something subtract so I do x squared and I'll do x squared minus 2. So there's 5, there's x squared, and here's x squared minus 2. So you can see if I took this and I could shift it up, it would be exactly the same shape as this. I haven't done anything to the shape of the function other than move it up or down. So if I have um, y equals x squared, x squared plus 5, that would be, I would put my function right up here with the vertex at 0 and 5. The original function, I'll put it here, so we had 1, 1, 2, and 4, so it would be like this. So here's y equals x squared, and this would be y equals x squared plus 5. And we'll do one in here it is over here, x squared y equals x squared minus 2, which is what we looked at on, whoops, minus 2. So that means it goes down 2, right? Just, just exactly what it says. So y equals x squared minus 2. Okay, so vertical shift is pretty basic, isn't it? You move the whole thing up, you move it down, and how far it goes depends on what the value of k is. So if k is, do I need to write this? So k is greater than 0, then up, vertical shift up, vertical shift, he's talking about, you need the lingo, right? Vertical shift up 5 units, because we don't have and this is k is less than zero and so it's going to be well in general you would just say vertical shift up k units vertical shift down k units down 
down two or K units. Okay, so up or down, very, very easy. Second one is just as easy. Let's pull the calculator back in and we're going to delete these two and we're going to put in a negative X squared. Oops, what happened? Well, they do. Negative X, I hit the app button instead of the variable button. Okay, watch this, fast, it's gonna be fast. Whoop, boom. Okay, so you saw what happened there. We went from being concave up, which we've talked about already, to being concave down. So here's y equals x squared, here's y equals negative x squared. So we had a reflection, and you say it's a reflection about the x-axis. And so um, later on in grade 11, you'll be reflecting about the y-axis, which means you'll be switching things this way. But this is, you just think about um, the x-axis as being a mirror. Okay, so we say reflection about the x-axis. So you would have started with our purple graph would have been y equals x squared. And our pink graph is going to be y equals negative x x squared. Okay, so the negative here, the negative means reflection about the x-axis, and that means the parabola is going to be concave down about the x-axis, because in later on you're going to be asked to describe all the transformations, so you need to know this little lingo. Reflection about the x-axis, um, i.e. parabola is concave down. Remember concave up, past the cup, concave down, why the frown? Remember that? Concave down, frown. Concave up, make a cup out of it. Okay, the next one is vertical compressions. So we're going to start basically again with our y equals x squared, only this time there's going to be an a in front of it, which means I could say y equals 2x squared, or y equals 5x squared, or y equals 1 third x squared, or a half x squared. So vertical compressions happen when the A value, so this is going to be the A value, is between zero and one. In other words, it's going to be a fraction, right? A fraction, some decimal number or a fraction. Generally, you'll be looking at fractions. So if I had Y equals um, I didn't change my color. No, I've ruined the whole lesson. So let's say I said a half x squared. Okay, so a compression, think about pushing something down, right? If I compress something. You know when you go on a trip and your suitcase is too full and you compress it. You push down on your clothes, you can do up that zipper. So the same thing is happening here. We're going to push down like this. We're going to push down on this side of the graph. We're going to push it down so that it ends up going like this. So I've made it flatter from a champagne flute to a salad bowl here. Okay, so that's a compression. And so this one would be like y equals a half x squared. And the other one is y equals x squared. So let's take a look at that on the calculator. Go back to my functions here. So we're going to clear that and we're going to put 0.5x squared. And you'll see what happens here. Graph it. Okay, so you can see it got compressed down. Let's do one that's even more. Let's do like a 0.1. So instead of 0.5, we'll put in a 0.1x squared. Bam. There, that one's nicely compressed. Okay, so you can see how we've squished it down. So what that is changing is it's changing 
the y values, right? So if I plugged in into this equation, if I put in one, I would have got one, right? y equals x squared. So this is just y equals x squared. If I plug in x is one, I get one. If I plug in one here, I would get a half, right? So instead of it being at one, it'd be at half. Instead of being at four, it's gonna be at two. Okay, so those are what we call vertical compressions. Now vertical stretches, it's affecting the same value again. So we're starting with y equals ax squared. Only this time, my a is going to be bigger than one. Bigger than one. So two, three, four, five, whatever you want. And in this case, let's do, um, so here's my y equals x squared, like this. And I'm going to put in, for my pink graph, I'm going to put in y equals, hmm, let's try 5. Try that on the calculator and see what happens. So back to the graph, we're going to erase the second one, and we're going to say 5x squared and graph it. Okay, so did you see? This was the first one graphed. That was y equals x squared, and here's 5x squared. So vertical stretches, what you're doing is you're pulling it's like pulling, putting you on a stretching rack here. So I take this and I pull it up. So if I pull it up, it's going to make it thinner like this, right? So instead of when X is one and one, I'm now going to have, when I plug in one here, I'm going to have five. So one, and this one would be like five instead. So that's what we call a vertical stretch. And you're going to say it's vertically stretched by a factor of five. I should have written that in here. So this was vertically compressed. Now, there are textbooks that describe this in different ways. Some will say it's vertically compressed by a factor of two. And others will say it's vertically compressed, vertically compressed. And I like this way better because it doesn't, mess you up. Vertically compressed by a factor of one half. So one textbook I used to use said would say two, this one would say a half. I know that the functions 11 course will do it this way, so that's why I'm teaching it this way now. And vertical stretches, now check with your teacher because some teachers like to say it the other way as, as well. So this would be vertically stretched, vertically stretched by a factor of five, by a factor of five. Okay, so we pulled it up five. So that's a vertical shift, a reflection, a compression, and two stretches. Okay, so let's go on to a horizontal shift. So what's, what's going to affect a horizontal shift? So this is the equation we're working with. Y equals X minus H squared. So a horizontal shift, if I have Y equals X squared, I'm going to draw two different ones here. So let's say this is X squared, and this is going to be my X squared here. Y equals X squared. So this is my parent function, the parent function or the most basic parabola. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do y equals x minus 2 squared. Okay, now I'm going to put this on the calculator because it's going to show you something that's kind of counterintuitive. So I'm going to clear this. I'm going to put bracket. I'm going to do x minus 2 squared. Okay, now, is it going to go to the left or to the right? It went to the right. Did you see that? I guess it won't do it all over again. But this one in the middle, of course, with a vertex at 0, 0 is y equals x squared. And this one went to the right two units. Two units to the right. One, two. So it's over here. Oops, I didn't put that vertex in the right spot. Let's call that two. Y equals X minus two squared. Okay, so first thing you're gonna learn 
Oh, sorry, that wasn't on the page, was it? First thing you're going to learn about transformations is that anything that affects X's, X's are weird. It says minus two, it went two to the right. Now watch what happens when I put in, I'll put in a third equation. It's going to be Y equals X plus, um, let's go not too far, let's plus three squared. And look, it went to the left. So when I put in y equals x, let me get another color here. So if I do y equals x plus 3 squared, the graph went over here. 1, 2, 3. So that's something that you're going to have to remember. X's are weird. Did you ever know the show called The X-Files? It was kind of a strange show about aliens. So if you think X's are weird, um, it looks like it goes to the left, but it goes to the right. It looks like it should go to the right, but it goes to the left. And that's going to be the coordinate of your, the X coordinate of your vertex, right? Because you see, look, two, there's a coordinate in my vertex. Plus three, minus three, right there. Okay, so the first one, this was a horizontal shift. two units to the right. Okay, so it says minus two went to the right. And this one is going to be horizontal shift. So we're talking about shifts. First you have to describe if it's horizontal or vertical. Okay, so horizontal shift, three units to the left. There you go, here it is right there. And we proved it with a graph. Okay, so now all together, we've done all of the transformations that you're going to need to know about a parabola for grade 11. Now what I want you to do is look at this equation here and see if you can describe. Now it says in the correct order. So in the correct order is the same as your bed mass rules. So anything that would involve a multiplication or division goes first. In other words, for this function, it's very easy. You just need to read it from left to right here. So this is my first transformation. Okay, think about what that, that represents. And the second one is this number here. We'll call that number two. My third transformation is going to be this part here. And my fourth is going to be this part here. Okay, so let's list what those transformations are in the correct order. So the first thing that happened to my graph is that I did this, a negative. A negative means reflection about the x-axis. So you're going to state these things. Reflection about the x axis. That's number one. Number two, three quarters. Is three quarters greater than one or less than one? So if it's between zero and one, this is what we call a vertical compression. So the function is vertical, vertically, or we'll just say vertical compression by a factor, by a factor of three quarters. Now if that was four thirds, even though it's a fraction, it's greater than one and that would have been a stretch, right? So just make sure you don't, just because you see a fraction, jump to the conclusion that, oh yeah, that's a compression. No, it has to be between zero and one. Okay, the third thing that happened here, plus two. So we just did those here. So if it's plus, it went to the left and it's horizontal. Anything that happens inside the brackets here is going to be horizontal. Anything outside the bracket is vertical, right? This is horizontal. These are vertical. So three is horizontal shift, two units, and it says plus, so it went left. Two units left. 
And the last thing we have to deal with here, number four, that is vertical. A vertical shift shifts and stretches and compressions, right? So vertical compression, vertical shift. Shift is just adding it up or up, moving it up or down. Vertical shift down, because it's negative, three units. And there, that's a perfect description of all of the transformations that have happened to this, to the graph of y equals x squared to get this function. So you could probably tell me a few things. It's going to be concave down, and you're going to learn very quickly that if you shift something up, like this question here, if I shift this up, the vertex here now is at 0 and 5, right? 0 and 5. So this number here gives you the y-coordinate of the vertex, and this value here gives you the x-coordinate of the vertex, right? This one here or here. These ones tell you the x-coordinate because you see how I moved them. Okay, so let's look at this last one, and then I will give you the link to that fun exercise. It really is fun. It's like a game. My students loved it. Okay, so what have we got here? Okay, here's my first transformation. That five. So everything is a transformation, right? Unless it's still just x squared. This, that's two. And this one here, that would be three. So there's only three transformations that have happened to this function. Okay, so let's describe them. The first one, it's not negative, so there's no reflection. The parabola will be concave up. So this is a vertical, because it's a, a Y change, vertical stretch by a factor of five. By a factor of five. This minus four, X's are weird. Remember that, X's are weird. So it says minus four, so it goes to the right four, and anything to do with X, remember you're on the horizontal axis, so that's a horizontal shift. So these are Y changes. Maybe I should write that up here. So this is Y, Y changes. And this one in here, this is a change to X. So anything in the brackets, this is X changes. And Y is vertical. Y is vertical. And X is horizontal. You know that because that's the way the axes go, right? Okay, so for this minus 4, this is a horizontal. So you have to start with either horizontal or vertical, unless it's a reflection. So we say a horizontal shift because it's just moving units, right? This way, this way. So vertical stretch or compression. This is greater than 1, so it's a stretch by a factor of 5. Horizontal shift, four units, right. right -o. And the last one, plus two. So this is vertical, because it's, it's affecting the Y. Vertical shift, up two units. So if that was a minus, it would be down two units, which we did up here. There was a negative one. Look, I changed all the signs. Okay, so in the end, if you were to graph this function, let's just do it quickly. It's going to be more uh, covered more clearly in another section, but just as a little precursor to what you're going to see soon, let's see if we can sketch this function. So I'm going to vertically stretch. So here's my y equals x squared. We'll just pencil in and lightly. I'm going to vertically stretch by a factor of 5. So let's say it's going to be like this now. And then I'm going to move it to the right 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that puts it over here. And then I'm going to shift it up 2. So finally, I'm just going to put it in color now. So I'm going to go up 1, 2. And I'm going to put my graph right here. 
So that's pretty much what you're going to be doing. So the vertex is at four, because I moved it this way four, and then I moved it up two, right? I moved it right four, up two. So what was zero, zero now becomes four, two for the vertex. And it's still concave up, but it's vertically stretched by a factor of five. And I just tried to show you that it would be thinner than the original parabola. Okay, so that's your first introduction to the transformations of the graph of y equals x squared. So leave some comments, give me a thumbs up, like the video, and don't forget to subscribe. And I hope this is helping you with your grade 10 math. Bye for now.